Hello everyone, we have our news for the week, so let's go through everything. Uh, maintenance, normal time as usual. Ending with maintenance is pretty much all the Final Fantasy X stuff that has not ended already. So if you haven't finished with any of that, last chance before maintenance. Uh, this week is going to be Final Fantasy X-2. So we're getting three new Neo Vision base units, no NVAs, uh, 30 uh, shards per login for each. Normal banner shot for them. They're all on the same banner special bundles so it looks like this uh fragment and neo vision 10 plus one ticket is our new fragment bundle there's one per unit and then fountain of lapis is coming back and then they're adding in new intrinsic abilities so we're getting two new shops. One looks like a gill shop where we can buy recipes to craft. And I believe they've been saying they're going to use master crowns to craft. We'll have to see how many per ability and everything like that. So the first for the gill shop to craft is Melia's, which is a cooldown. One use every five turns. So it's a magic cover, reduced damage, morale based barrier, gives her triple cast and fills morale gauge. So really wondering what all the modifiers are on all that. It, you know, does the cover last all five turns? Is the mitigation really high or anything? Especially uh, depending on how many, how much it costs to actually craft. But I do like Melia. So we'll see just how good that is and if that makes her really usable again. And new heroic quest. So this means we're getting more, some more stories. So there's only one item this time for Tulian. And it's a decent boost for him. So 55 attack, 35 defense, 100% mana for him, which he definitely needs mana. 100% double hand attack, which helps him out quite a bit. And a cooldown to reduce earth resist for all enemies and boost uh, limit for himself and reduce uh, defense for all enemies. So this is going to help Tulian out a bit, especially anybody that likes Tulian. Make him a little bit more useful. And they're bringing back uh, the 10-man tri trials, Chamber of Arms. So a couple of notes about things that they had to change to keep things working. Looks like, at the moment, no changes from what we had before. So if there's anything that you missed, you can go back and re-clear it. Get the items. There was some free lapis to get. All the fights at this point, with Neo Visions, you easily doable. You can pretty much just roll over all the trials. They were made for pretty much seven star max. Some of them, you know, came out before seven stars. So all the trials are going to be easy. There looks like no upgrades to the trials themselves at the moment. And then we're getting our big uh, UI updates. So there's a bunch of stuff. So all the uh, enhancement units are getting changed into points and it's going to be a lot easier to uh, deal with upgrading units and everything. So they show all the different menus that we're going to see. There's a lot of changes to the UI that's coming. All of it's nice, going to make it a little bit more streamlined, easy to deal with, especially with potting the units. And the biggest thing is seeing they're getting converted to points, we won't have to worry about unit space for them anymore. And we're getting uh, Riku's Ability Awakening. So she gets a Crown Ability update. Four crowns to max out the one ability. Adds a bunch of attacks. So she gets 2,000 flat attack. Added there. EX3, Machina Slayer. That's, I believe, 160 Machine Killer. And then it also says there's upgrades to her other abilities. Her Super Limit, Regular Limit, and Ultra Potion Plus. So hopefully that'll help her out a bit. I've used her a little bit, but not too much uh, before the upgrades. And 
And new units, new vision card. So all three units have the same exact vision card. They're just sharing. Uh, no premium units. So maxed out. 110 attack and magic on the card. And then 75% killers for reapers, machines, and humans. So it helps with uh, getting some killers around. And that's about it there. New story. So we're getting a uh, King Mog for Final Fantasy X. Standard King Mog stuff there. Getting some recipes so that we can upgrade Fairy Earrings, uh, Tiny Bee, and Soda Pain. So the gun upgrades to 225 attack. Fairy Earrings get uh, 50 attack added on to them. Right now they're only defense and spirit. So that's uh, actually really nice to see that. And then uh, Sword of Pain, we can upgrade to a two-handed weapon, which uh, is really nice. Right now, it's only one-handed. And it also adds 25% limit damage and 50% machine killer. Right now, it only has the resist on it. And then we'll be able to buy the uh, Tetra Band, 20 defense, 40 magic and spirit, 20% fire, ice, lightning, and water. So elemental resist and a decent amount of magic spirit is nice. Then we get a 45 attack accessory with uh, null stop, which is actually helpful. And a 45 with null charm, which is also helpful. So those are kind of nice. Standard bonuses. And then at the bottom, we should have, yeah, some bonus fights. So arid assault. Looks like we'll be able to get a master crown out of this. So it's going to be just a one hit challenge and then they're doing a character battle. So looks like we'll be able to clear this daily and to get unit fragments for the uh, three new units. So that's kind of nice. And then Noppy's getting intrinsic too. I am not really happy about the way they're doing this. So we have the gill shop to buy recipes and then it looks like they're doing like a premium shop for uh, other abilities. So the intrinsic for Nappy looks really strong. I like Nappy a lot, but they're kind of forcing us to pull for Nappy and veteran players like myself already have Nappy maxed out and I have at least four extras. So I'd end up essentially with a second EX2 Nappy, uh, EX3 Nappy about just to get the intrinsic We'll see if they add any other ways to get these. But uh, honestly, I'd rather just buy a bundle for like half the price and just get the intrinsic. Personally, myself. Haven't decided what, I, what I'm going to do with this yet. I really do want the intrinsic. I'm just not really happy about the banner. So we'll see if there's another way to get this or not. But the intrinsic, 5,000 flat health, 3,000 flat attack, 100% attack, 100% chain cap, which will actually max out Nappy's chain cap. They sh should have 100 in the kit. And then 200% demon and fairy killer, which helps out killers. So it looks very nice overall. But we'll see exactly what they're doing here. But it looks like it's just going to be from the step up only and they're doing a special uh, shop to get them. And then there is the new banner itself. So three units, standard banner. So no premiums. You need 10 tickets if you want to pity one. And they're doing the uh, three steps of 4,500. Then the fourth step free, all 10 plus one summons. So all of them have a Brave Shift. Yuna gets two turns. The other two get three turns in the Brave Shift. So Yuna, super, 100 uh, flat magic on it, which is very nice for an accessory. And then uh, regular trust is clothing. 1,000 health, 30 magic, 60 spirit, 20% to all resists. Uh, pretty decent spirit gear there. And then her featured ability... So she gets a water boost for a single unit. 
essentially 10 turn cooldown she'll be able to imbue water and then it will give them a 60 percent water boost for the first turn second goes up to 80 percent and third turn is 100 percent water boost so not team wide like sylvie she's pretty much the water version of leftia but still a nice boost for one unit there and then we have riku so her super 300 attack fist this is a one-handed fist it adds 200 percent to uh bottom chain score and four limit crystals per turn and then her regular trust clothing 65 attack 60 defense and it that should be a 50x modifier for all physical attacks i believe and she's also listed as getting an upgrade for her shock storm ability so we'll have to see just how much they boost that because she's the only one listed out of the three for, to have a global upgrade and then we have pain so it's super accessory 85 attack 75 percent limit damage pretty decent attack lb uh accessory there and then regular trust clothing 80 attack and defense for female only and 50 percent double hand attack not bad so we can take a look at what they look like on the jp side so first up we have pain So dark focused, she gets an ability, big hit, when then it looks like it boosts her bolting move, which should bring that to like a 600x modifier. So that seems pretty strong there. Double hand attacker, killer, she gets humans, machines, plants, fairies, beasts, and aquatic. And a 300x modifier, Let's see what ability is that? Looks like the health sacrifice. So that goes to 340 with the trust with a 12% sacrifice on a finisher. And then base limit, 87% defense break, 135 dark down, 150 dark physical hit. And then she gives herself a 170 modifier for limits. So it looks like you want to use her base limit before going for her shifted limit. And then in the shift, she actually gets ta tag team moves. And actually, all three of them get tag moves in the shifted form. So she gets her dark tag, which uh, also has 25% dagger sword, great sword, and katana in peril, which is really nice. She also gets lightning and water, but she's dark focused. And then her shifted limit, also a tag move, 70x against fairies, and then a 200x. And if you do her base limit first, you add 170 to both of those. So she should hit decently strong for a dark uh, attacker. Even though she does have the two other moves, she really wants to be dark. Only thing that she's really missing is a dark amp for herself so you'll need an external unit which obviously there's a bit for uh dark uh, boost and then we have riku so she's pretty similar so she gets uh, 87 attack and magic break for one enemy on a six turn cooldown so you can't keep that up all the time but it's got a 140 lightning in peril on it which is decent. 1250 with a critical finisher, which also gives herself 75% general mitigation and 300 attack and defense. She's got a buff beneficial only dispel on her bolting, 250 modifier there. She's got Omni cover for one ally for one turn. So that can save a uh, squishy DPS. Let's see, her killers, we got humans, beasts, machine, fairies, aquatic, and avians. So a decent amount of killers on them. Base limit, we got lightning, 150x hit, 150 human killer to the party. 
she gives herself a 150x modifier for her limits. And then she gives herself a 450 modifier. Looks like for the bolting that has the beneficial uh, dispel. Maybe another move. A decent modifier after that limit there. And then in the shift, so she also has a tag move that decreases uh, weapons. And this is what uh, the news lists as getting a global upgrade. So I have to see if they're upgrading the imperils, the damage, everything. But it's still a tag. 350 modifier, 120 lightning down, and then both throwing and gun 25% uh, weapon and perils. See, so she has a Magnus that does 100% berserk, but after the damage pot, it looks like. So I'm not sure how that's going to work unless it will let you cast that. And then even though she's berserked, it will still cast the other abilities. And then in the shift, her limit tag move again, she gets 50 against humans and then 200 for anything. And again, if you do her base limit first, we add 150 X modifier to it. So she is lightning lock. She wants to do lightning. Doesn't really have a second element, but she does have a non-elemental move. So you can imbue her with something. And the last unit we have is Yuna. So she has her water boost and imbue for one ally. Mitigate magic damage 99% for one turn. So that is actually super nice when you know a really big magic hit is going to come in. She got a heal, a barrier, and a 75% general mitigation for everybody. That's actually really nice too. Some LB fill rate. That will also fill 20 crystals. And it looks like she can cast that whenever. She gets 160 Machine Killer for the party, 300% a limit damage on the cooldown as well, and 400% a buffs. That does take her limit, though. But still, that's pretty nice uh, boost right there. 400 uh, stats with 300 limit damage, and you get the 160 Killer. Then she gets a 160 Killer for Reapers, mitigate physical and magic against Reaper for 50%, and then gives herself a 150x limit modifier for magic damage and then she gets a recasting mirage so a three stack mirage that will cast for four turns in a row essentially that is quite handy as well and then her base limit Add water to the party, 45% water boost, 350 stats, 250 limit damage. So quite a nice water support in the base. And then in the shift, she does have a couple other elements. Again, she wants to be water overall. Tag team moves. Her wind one does staff, rod, and instrument, 25% in peril. See, killers in the shift, we got Fairy, Aquatic, Human, Machine, Reaper, and Demons. Double Hand Magic, decent amount there. And then the shifted limit, tag team just like the others. So 100x against Reapers, and then 150x to everybody. And then her cooldown there will add 150 to both of those. So overall, I'd say 
pretty decent. Obviously, she's locked to water. So all three have their one element that they're kind of locked to. But not bad units overall. So that's pretty much all we have for the news. Looking forward to the UI updates. Um, I've been looking forward to these. 10-2 was one of the Final Fantasy games that I liked a lot. I'm going to be pulling. I'm just going to be doing uh, ticket pulls that I've been saving tickets for. We'll see if I can get all three or not. If you decide to pull, good luck to you. And we're going to end this video here. Hope everybody enjoyed.